evening guys. I just wanted to share a little project I've been working on for the past couple of months. And that is a toolbox specifically made for my crosscut saw. A lot of you know that I have a winter camp. And I just recently brought my crosscut saw home. It's probably one of my most important tools out there besides my axe. And even though I restored this crosscut saw about a year and a half ago, I'm still learning and I was re-watching a lot of older videos that I had watched previously and realized that I had missed some steps. So I decided to put together a toolbox, find some of the tools that I've been missing. And some of these tools are pretty hard to come by so I decided just to make them. I do enjoy making my own tools. So I just repurposed this little crate, turned it into the toolbox, did some wood burning on it. And now I just want to go through some of the tools I made. Not all of them are homemade, but most of the important ones are. So now that I have some proper tools, I'm going to spend the summer getting my saw ready for the fall. My favorite tool I made is this jointer. Pretty simple tool, but what it does basically is it curves this file so it fits the breast of your saw. You notice my saw is curved compared to like a regular hand saw, which is straight. So you have two threaded bolts on the end and one in the middle, and it just puts a little bit of pressure on it to curve it. And you just run this over the teeth and it makes all the teeth the same height. You know, if you have some teeth that are sticking out further than others, they're going to be doing more work and the saw is not going to be very efficient. So that's the jointer. Favorite one right there. The next one is my saw set. Just took a pair of vice grips, did some modifications to it. And what it does is you clamp this over the teeth and this bolt will actually pry the tooth over. And depending on how far you screw this in depends on how far uh, you bend the tooth over. That's for setting your kerf. You ever notice on a saw your teeth kind of go like that? Well that tool bends the teeth over to a, a certain amount. Second favorite tool. Third one is a raker gauge. Uh, what you do is you set this over top of your raker teeth and you run your file. You always want your raker teeth a little bit shorter than your uh, cutting teeth. And what this does is just takes off a little bit off your raker teeth, making them slightly shorter. Uh, one day I want to replace this piece here with the hardened steel. Eventually, you know, ru running a file over this, you're going to take some steel off. So I have a chunk of a annealed piece of file that I will replace that with one day. Next tool is my spider gauge. It's a cross-shaped tool with little legs and one of the legs are a little bit shorter than the rest and when you put it on a, surf, a flat surface you can feel it that it rocks and what this does is it measures the curve once again I said that uh, your teeth are bent like this and you put this tool and if it rides flat you know your curve is set if it rocks a bit you know it has to your tooth has to come over a little bit more and this is set for 12 thou of an inch another important tool that I picked up is a leaf feeler gauge this measures very uh, thin amounts and for me to set all my tools I need this gauge to make sure I'm uh, doing it the right thickness. You can see you got 0 0.012 or point, 
0 0.30 millimeters, 0 0.20 millimeters, and so on. Very important tool. I have here what's called a pin gauge. And it's just a, a depth gauge that you slide. Uh, once you file down your raker teeth, it's just to quickly check to make sure that they're at the right height. Pretty simple tool. This is a little punch I have. It's for swedging over the, the raker teeth. Your raker teeth are shaped like this and some people like to hammer over the edges to make it more like a chisel. That's what this tool is for. I also have a little hammer to go with it. I have a flat edge here to use for an anvil. Some people, uh, what they like to do is when they get their saw that they're going to restore, once again you have your kerf on your teeth. Some people like to flatten them out and start from scratch again. So I got a flat edge here. Leather pouch with a deer antler button on it just to keep some of my tools. All the smaller ones. I have a simple thing I made from leather to hold my triangular tapered files. I have a handle here I made from a broom handle and it's just for leverage so you have more control when you're filing. Just stick your file in there like that. A pair of pliers. Um, before I had my saw set tool I used to just take the pliers and pry the teeth over and then check them with my spider gauge. Uh, what else I got here? I have a, the head of a ball peen hammer to use as an anvil. Some people like to hammer the teeth over instead of prying them over. I haven't tried that yet myself. And finally, sharpening stone. Uh, this is good for cleaning the saw. You soak this in kerosene or WD-40 and you go along the saw blade cleaning off the rust and it's also good for taking the burr off the back of the tooth once you file it. Made a simple leather pouch so this uh, stone isn't rubbing up against other tools and maybe chipping it or taking gouges out of it. So that's my toolbox. Pretty simple. And I'm going to get to work here pretty soon, getting this uh, saw back in shape.